Well, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this service of evening prayer. My name is Reverend David, and I am the curate at St. Michael's in Hyington, St. Matthew, St. Luke in Darlington, and St. Andrew in Balham. Very warm welcome if you're joining us for the first time. This is something that we do every week, so you're welcome to join us uh, here at this place for uh, either myself or Reverend Lissa or Reverend Luth, Ruth uh, to lead us in a service of evening prayer. Uh, but it's good to be able to come together, whatever format, whatever way we're doing it, uh, because it's God himself who brings us. Uh, anytime we come, we trust that it's God himself who has invited us to meet with him, that by his spirit he does meet with us, and that uh, perhaps we might learn or hear something in our meditation, in our prayers of him, uh, and who we are to him. So I invite you now, uh, at this moment, to adopt a posture of prayer as you are accustomed, uh, plant your feet, close your eyes, whatever it may be, and breathe. Breathe and know that you are loved and you are at his. Beloved, we're come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us sit or kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. And together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought not ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in them. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. So we come now to the Magnificat, and I invite you to say it with me. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength through his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped his, per his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Ho oh, Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we have two readings today. First is taken from the book of Second Timothy, Paul's letter to, uh, to Timothy, second letter. Chapter 1, 
uh, the first 14 verses. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you, so that, so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a power of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time, and it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard, that I have entrusted to him for this day. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, which with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit, who lives in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, beginning at chapter 17, verse 5. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would you say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down and eat. Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me, while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our two readings this morning, the Gospel of Luke and from 2 Timothy, speak to us of faith and service, and of what it means to be servants of Christ. We, every one of us watching at this moment, are servants of Christ, or at least called to become servants of Christ. Unlike the modern criticism levied against Christianity, that this is a bad idea, this is a bad thing, as if belonging to Christ impinges upon our freedom, that this servanthood to him is really just a form of slavery. What the Bible actually tells us, and the long and varied witness of 2,000 years of Christianity, is that, in fact, it is quite the opposite. To be a servant of Christ, to be his slave even, is the true liberty. To know him as our Lord and Master is real freedom. Christ has come to set us free, and to be his is to become what we're truly meant to be. It is to find in him our perfection as participants in his good mission, the mission of God in this world. We are servants of Christ. For those of you who perhaps know me, a little bit at least, you will know that my preference is to preach from the gospel uh, any given week. Uh, but I've decided against this for today, as I think Paul's words to Timothy can be echoed as God's own words to each of us this morning, this afternoon, this evening. God's word to us individually, perhaps, and God's words, words to us corporately as the church, especially given the situation that's happening in England with the church and so forth at the moment. We see all around us the faithful being distracted by matters and concerns the culture around us is preoccupied with. In many cases, the church has abandoned sound teaching in that we can so often be colluding with the fears and anxieties and pathologies of the world around us. 
the church in this country would seem to be shrinking. Our numbers happen to be decreasing, and we don't always have the clergy needed in every parish to be Christ's shepherds for his sheep. But this seemingly bad situation isn't, I think, as dire as it may seem. We still have time to turn around. Now Paul, he writes this letter to Timothy while imprisoned in Rome. And just like today, in Paul's time, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus was a subversive act. It upsets the political and social and religious and cultural conventions of the time, of any time and culture for that matter. The early Christians' proclamation that Jesus Christ is Lord and not Caesar was a treasonous act that sent Paul and many other Christians to prison. It's subversive to say that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all our human desires, something the world doesn't want to admit as it seeks fulfillment of those desires in anything but God. That we are sinful creatures in need of, vi of the victory that Jesus has won for us by his life, death, and resurrection and ascension. This good news the world needs, yet the world so often misunderstands it and rejects it. And this is what's landed Paul into prison. So Paul, he writes this letter to Timothy as a sort of wise veteran of the faith, having known and experienced the ups and downs and awe and power and love of God in and through all of his missional journeys, in and through his many tribulations. Paul writes from prison to the younger men, as if to his student or apprentice. This is the relationship of teacher to people, or master to Padawan. The older, wiser disciple is writing to give advice to the younger, greener disciple. But notice the language here. To Timothy, my dear son, or my beloved child, in other translations, this bespeaks of familiarity and fondness, the intimate language of one who truly cares for this younger man. So again, hear then in this God's own voice to us today, as heavenly father to his beloved children. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayer. Paul thanks God for Timothy's sincere faith in Jesus and says this, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame, to rekindle the gift of God, which is, in me, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Timothy had been ordained by Paul for the service in God's church, and it's done through this act of laying on of hands. I think, of course, of my own ordination this last summer, kneeling before the bishop, he laying his hands upon me and praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit to be sent down upon me for the office and work of priests, of a priest in God's church. I'm also thinking of confirmations, where each of us, those of us who have been confirmed, called by God, called by name to be his own, kneel before the bishop, and that gift of the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit, to confirm the faith of our baptisms in us, consecrating us, setting us apart for his good and holy work in the world as fellow participants in the priesthood of Christ. This laying on of hands, it goes right back to the beginning, passed down from generation to generation through the centuries in an unbroken line, all the way back to the apostles themselves, and thus to Jesus Christ. Paul reminds Timothy that he was ordained by him, and tells him to fan the flame of this gift of God, to rekindle this gift of God, this gift of the Holy Spirit, I'm reminded of a campfire. I like to camp quite a bit. Embers burnt down low by the morning, needing to be fanned to flame again and, and restocked. For this reason, I, I remind you, he says, I remind you to fan to flame the gift of God. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Again, from an old veteran of the faith to the young disciple, the way of Christ is a spiritual battle, but we have not been given a spirit of fear in the face of this struggle before us, but a spirit of strength, of love and wisdom or sound mind. This struggle, this battle, Paul is not telling Timothy to fight in the conventional way, in our own strength, our own love or our own wisdom, with the weapons of this world, but in the power and love and wisdom of God's spirit in us. We go out in peace. We go out in peace, the peace of Christ that passes all understanding, to love and serve the Lord. This is the heart of the gospel, my friends. The life of the Christian is the life of Christ in me. It is the life of love and wisdom and the power and gifts of the Spirit working through us, not lived in terms of that the world demands, but in service of God. So for so many churches, 
uh, or especially around this area in this deanery, there's an interregnum at the moment. We don't have a priest in charge. There's no clergy about. It's a sit situation I think, frankly, sucks for a lot of people. And yet even here in this situation, there is a great gift and opportunity because God is always good. There may be no ordained priests in charge at the moment, but remember the gift of God that is being bestowed upon us by the laying on of hands in our confirmations. That we are the church in this place, wherever that place may be. We are the church in that place. That when two or more are gathered together, there Christ is also. That we are Christ's servants in our communities. That we are his ministers to a world that needs good news. To remember that we are fed in order to feed others. We are encouraged that we might encourage others. That we are saved that we might bring Christ's salvation to others. And for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. As fellow ministers to the gospel, this is what the world needs right now. Disciples who know themselves to be God's own servants, saved and set apart and changed by God's good spirit in us for God's holy purposes. My friends, people are still people no matter what generation we find ourselves in. Children and young people are crying out for meaning and purpose and identity. Parents are finding it harder and harder to put food on the table for their families. Though we have access to information, and one another, like no other time in human history, people are lonely. People are in need. People are finding it difficult to know who and what to trust, no longer have solid ground to stand upon. People are seeking ways to deal with their own shame and their guilt, yet do so by doubling down on the causes for that same shame and guilt. People are seeking healing from wounds that medicine can't heal, a brokenness and a shame. We are victims and victimizers, and we need a solution. We have desires that seem insatiable, and we look in all the wrong places to try to find satisfaction. People, we still confront death and loss and mourning. Whether the world wants to recognize it or not, what it needs is Jesus. It needs Jesus Christ, the incarnate God of creation, crucified on our behalf for the forgiveness of sins, who was raised from the dead on the third day. God has seen us in our misery. He has heard us in our distress, and he acts. He has come down to rescue us from the hand of our oppressors. As Paul says to, to Timothy, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This is what the world needs, my friends. We have, we have that good news. We are the servants of that gospel. We are the church in this place. Paul writes to us as prisoner in Rome where he testified to the good news or testified to the good news to all of those who might have listened. So let us, let us not be ashamed to testify about our Lord. May we join with Paul and Timothy and all the saints, to all of those who would listen. With this, uh, let us join with Paul and Timothy and all the saints in their suffering for the gospel, by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. So I encourage you to pray. Pray in the spirit of power, of love and wisdom, giving thanks for the victory of Christ and the gift of his spirit in us. Fan into flame, rekindle that gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. To be a servant of Christ, to know him as Lord and Master is real freedom. Christ has come to set us free. To be his is to become what we are truly meant to be. It is to find in him our perfection as participants in his good mission for the world, the mission of God's perfect and life-changing love to this world that is in such need. Servants of Christ, God bless you in that journey. Amen. So I invite you to say with me the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, 
and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we say together the Apostles' Creed, confessing the faith of our baptisms, we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the Collect for today, the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. My friends, at the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond, hear our prayer. So let us turn to the risen Lord, who gives us the spirit to make all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We continue to pray for our sisters from Nigeria who have been kidnapped, the nuns that were taken. We pray for their safe return, their well-being. Lord God, that their captors would recognize the wrong. And Lord, that they would repent. Lord, we thank you for your witness throughout the world, throughout the centuries. Lord Jesus, that through suffering, through the way that we bear our griefs, the way that we bear our pain, the way that we live, suffer, and die, that we are a witness to you and your power in us. I pray that you would send your power to be in us, that you would give us here in this country confidence to share your gospel, to endure persecution of different kinds. Lord God, that you would be with us in and through them. May we be faithful to you and the tradition that you have passed down, the deposit that was given to Timothy and to the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray that God would grant us all humility. Humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, in our homes, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, with colleagues and friends and family, wherever we may be. Lord, I pray that you would be with those who are lonely at this time, who find themselves alone, separated from the world, whether out of fear or anxiety, or whatever it may be. Those who are crying out for help. Lord, may they find it. 
find it in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray that you would provide food for those who lack food, work for those who lack work, and shelter for those who are homeless. In this city and beyond, wherever it may be, grant to your people, the people here in this place, wherever that may be, eyes to see and ears to hear where the need might be. And as we prayed in our collect, the will and the ability to meet that need, the desire to seek out your face in the faces of others. Lord Jesus, we ask for your intervention and a way through for those who can't find a way themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I pray, Lord, that by your power, war and famine, disease, natural disaster may cease throughout all the world. Pray especially for the nations and the leaders of nations, for our new king, our new government. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Pray that for them who are suffering at this time. Pray for a cessation of hostilities, your peace that passes all understanding. Pray for your intervention. Bring it to an end. Grant hope, O Lord. Hope for those who are being attacked. Hope for those who are attacking. Hope for the victims and the victimizers. Hope where there is no hope to be found, where things are at the bleakest. Pray for Russia, and those having to go off to fight. Lord, have mercy upon them. They know not what they do. And I pray for the nations and the leaders of nations to seek the common good, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, God, that you would reveal yourself as a light and a presence to those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are dying, for them and for their carers, for all those seeking treatment, or diagnosis, or tests of any kind. Lord, you are the good physician. You are the healer. Perhaps we tend, but you do the healing. I pray for healing for all of those who are sick. That you would meet them in their pain. You would meet us in our grief. And we ask for miracles, O oh Lord. And eyes to recognize those miracles. We ask for people to pray and come to you. My friends, if there's anybody you'd like to pray specifically for at this time, I invite you to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I pray, Lord, that according to your promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day, giving you thanks for that great victory that you have won and are winning in our midst. And we pray now for those who are left behind, those who mourn, whether it be from a loss from quite recently or some time ago. Lord Jesus, have mercy. You who are light in the darkness, shine in our hearts. You who are good, the good shepherd, lead us to the darkest paths. Those of us who can't stand upon our feet anymore, Lord, carry us and raise us up again. Give us that sense of hope, the hope that you have declared, the hope that you have won, the hope that we all can have in you, in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I pray, Lord, that you would send the fire of your Holy Spirit upon your people that we may bear faithful witness to your resurrection, that in all things, Lord, we would be faithful to you. 
here in this city, wherever we're watching this, this, uh, this from, wherever we may find ourselves in the future. Lord Jesus, may we seek your spirit and seek your will. Pray for your church. Lord, lay and ordain all of us. Grant us a share of your healthful spirit to move and work in us and through us for the sake of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. The love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, could we say the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you for joining me for this time of prayer. Our service is now ended and I wish you a good rest of your evening. Know God's presence with you as you fall away to sleep. Meet him in your dreams. Meet him in your prayers as you wake in the morning. And know that you are his beloved. God bless you tonight.